Hello, Booktube. This is Johnny. I'm down in the lower level. This is the lower level. This is where the library is. I've shown you this. I'm down here in the lower level because it is a Friday night here in West Michigan. It is May the 11th. It is going on 10 o'clock at night. And the reason why I'm down here is because I have to sleep down here tonight because our granddaughter, Josie Joy, is spending the night and she is sleeping with Nani. So Papa comes down here to sleep. So I, uh, I thought I'd make a video since it's 10 o'clock and I don't go to bed until 11. And... Um, People were doing in Booktube World uh, Friday Reads and I can't show all the books that I have been reading this week but um, because I didn't want to carry them all down here. So what I did is I just want to show a few things that go along with my reading. Uh, so today is a Friday and uh, yesterday I got in the mail some new books and one of the books that I got in the mail was this is Nicaea and its Legacy an Approach to 4th Century Tr Trinitarian Theology by Louis uh, Aries so I've, I've been reading this uh, the uh, the first first couple of, the first chapter of the introduction today I I'm I was kind of out of it today because I don't know I never really woke up <laughs> I had to volunteer at the book nook the library used bookstore from ten to one and it was a cold rainy dark gray day and Carol my wife was gone all day babysitting over in Grand Rapids, our um, Cora, our new granddaughter, because our, our daughter-in-law, Emily, has gone back to work. But next week, Cora can now start going to daycare. So Josie Joy and Cora will be going to daycare because our son, he works, and our daughter-in-law, they work. So, but I think there has to be five or six weeks before you can bring your baby to a daycare. There's some kind of rule. So now she's eligible. Coralie is now eligible to go to daycare. So my wife and Emily's mother have been taking turns babysitting. And my daughter-in-law only works four days a week, so it's not... It's even though it's a 12 hours, well, I'm not sure how many hours, but she works four days a week. So anyway, I got this in the mail, been looking at this. And another book I got in the mail is I've shown you these books. These are the series, the Reformation Commentary on Scripture. This is the newest one, Jeremiah and Lamentations, edited by J. Jeffrey Tyler. Now, I've shown you these. I can show you the set over here. See, these are the set. And this is one, two, one of the recent ones. So, eventually they'll come out with all of these Reformation commentary. This is on Genesis 1 through 11. Not the second volume hasn't come out. You have the Psalms 1 through 72. First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezekiel and Daniel, Luke, John chapters one through twelve, Acts, Romans nine through sixteen, First Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, and Philippians and Colossians. And then you have Hebrews and James in the Reformation Commentary series. These are another series that are put out by Erdman's. This is the 
medieval tradition, the Bible in medieval tradition. This is on the book of Genesis. And these are all quoting medieval commentators. And one of those has come out is the one on Jeremiah. So I come down here to look at this. This one. So they, uh, I got one of those Reformation commentary series and I'll look at, I was, I don't know when I got this one. I think this one came out in, came out last year. The Bible, Medieval Tradition, The Book of Jeremiah by Joy A. Schreider, translator and editor. So, I don't have the ancient commentary series on Jeremiah. I didn't buy all of those. You can't buy, you can't buy everything. So, when I was thinking of Jeremiah and thinking of Nicaea and its legacy, I thought of these books. Now, this was a very interesting book. I read a lot of this, I think, last year. This is on God Has Spoken, a uh, History of Christian Theology by Gerard Bray. So, you can read about the, all the um, discussion on the work of the Father and the Trinity. And then there's a chapter, The Challenge of the Incarnation the Son of God. So you can look at the history of theology in that. Also, this is a good book by Gerald Bray, too. Creeds, Councils, and Christ. Did early Christians misrepresent Jesus? Uh, so this is really good, too. And then when you talk about reading Reformation commentaries, a good book is this book here, Reading Scripture with the Reformers by Timothy George. This is in this series. You can see that they're color. There's another book I have on this series. I don't know where it is right now. But there's another series in this. What's it called? I think it's called... Yeah, The Theology of the Reformers, which I couldn't find. I had that book for years by Timothy George, The Theology of the Reformers. And I remember I went looking for it, and I could not find it for the life of me. So then, so then the question arises, okay, you're going to study an Old Testament book, The Prophecy of Jeremiah. So what books would I recommend? besides commentaries. Well, one thing I used to always tell people that it's really important to get a history, get in your mind the history of the Old Testament Israel. And this is a book that I don't know, I don't think I ever used this in Bible college or seminary. I think I bought it when I was an intern in Houston, Texas. It was for sale and I just bought it. I have a whole slew of history uh, Old Testament Israel, and I didn't want to show them all because it would just be too much. But this is a general one. This is for a more easier one to read. It's evangelical. It's conservative. Uh, so I would recommend this one. Kingdom of Priests, The History of Old Testament Israel by Eugene H. Merle. So, you know, it's good to get, if you're going to understand the Old Testament, especially the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, the minor prophets. Uh, it's good to get a good understanding of old, the history of Israel. So this is a good book. Another good book was written by my one of my professors in seminary. This is by Wilhelm A. Van Gamrian. This is called Interpreting the Prophetic Word. This is like an overview, an overview of the prophets like you have in here. Oh, let me see. There's a chapter on... The, here it is. The message 
of Jeremiah. Then you have an outline of the, the book of Jeremiah, the, you know, literary form and structure. Jeremiah as the suffering servant of God is one of the themes. Jeremiah as the new Moses. Jeremiah's confession. And it gives you a summary of the whole uh, book of Jeremiah. And very, that's really good. It's a good book to have along with this kingdom of priests. Another book is a book by Old Palmer Robinson, The Christ of the Prophets. And it says here, in this thorough introduction to the prophets of ancient Israel, Old Palmer Robinson captures the passion and purpose of their extraordinary writing. He writes, a new covenant, a new Zion, a new temple, a new Messiah, a new relation to the nation of the world. These were the ex expectations designed to create future hope for the people who would have to endure the trauma of deportation from their land. After examining the origins of propheticism, the prophet's call and their proclamation and application of law and covenant, Robinson devotes special attention to the biblical theological significance of the exile and restoration. Now we talked about the exile and restoration the other day when we were looking at, at the four Gospels and how they set forth that Jesus brings about the end of the exile and brings about the restoration of the people of God. Uh, viewing these experiences through the lens of several prophets, he draws our focus to the suffering and glorious restoration of God's people in Christ. Christ of the prophets serves as a sequel to the Christ of the covenants, which I have also, but I don't know where it is at the present moment. So this is a good book to read. And also if you want to get a grand narrative of the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation, I really recommend this book by Christopher J. H. Wright, The Mission of God, Unlocking the Bible's Grand Narrative. The Bible is has, was written over thousands of years, but it has it was providentially uh, has one really divine author, which is God, the Holy Spirit, and there is this grand narrative of you know salvation history, redemptive history, and this is a good book that gives you that. Uh, uh, it says here, most Christians would agree the Bible provides a base for mission, but Christopher Wright boldly maintains that mission is bigger than that. There is, in fact, a missional basis for the Bible. And we saw that in the Gospels. When we looked at the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 1, it says that Jesus Christ, the son of David and the son of Abraham. And one thing, one of the themes of of the Gospel of Matthew is that Jesus not only came to fulfill those prophecies of the Old Testament, but he also came to to bring about the salvation of the cosmos, the, a new humanity made up of Jew and Gentile, one united people of God, that his that God's mission has always been since the fall in the Garden of Eden the fall of Adam to bring about not only salvation of humanity but the salvation and the restoration of all things the whole created order and that has God's been that's God's mission from the from the Genesis up until the end of this present age so he says in order to understand the Bible we need to a missional hermeneutic an interpretive perspective that is in tune with a great missional theme. We need to see the big picture of God's mission and how the familiar bits and pieces fit into the grand narrative of Scripture. Beginning with the Old Testament and the groundwork it lays for understanding who God is, what He has called His people to be and to do, how the nations fit into God's mission. Wright gives us a new her hermeneutic perspective on scripture. This new perspective provides a solid, expansive basis for holistic mission. So when you talk about mission, it's it's like we go back 
to the Gospel of Matthew. What do you find at the end of the Gospel of Matthew? Now tomorrow, or Sunday, but uh, Steve Donahue is going to give an overview, a literary view of of Mark, which I I was planning to read it this weekend, the Gospel of Mark. But when you read the last chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, what do you read? It says here. Uh, verse 16 Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and make disciples of the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This is what is called the Great Commission. The church, the people of God, have always had a mission, and that was to proclaim the Word of God, the teachings of Scripture, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. So, God has always had a mission. And you you can read that in this book, which is really good. And going back to Jeremiah, the prophecy of Jeremiah, another good book is this series called Dictionary of Old Testament Prophets. If you want to, you have in here this huge long article on the book of Jeremiah. And then you have, you and in this article, literary survey, historical framework, basic structure, smaller divisions, prominent genres, some elements of hope, the Septuagint of Jeremiah, the Masochranic text, theology and purpose. So it's really a great article on Jeremiah. Then you have after the main article on the overview of the book of Jeremiah, History of Interpretation of Jeremiah. And that's where this comes in. You have the history of how the church throughout church history has interpreted Jeremiah from the Reformation time, the medieval time, and then if you look at the ancient commentary series published by InterVarsity Press, you can look at how the early church interpreted Jeremiah. But this gives you an overview, the hist Jeremiah History of Interpretation. Uh, it's a really good article. So you can look at that. And then you go back to looking at the Nicene Creed and its legacy. A good book to read about what was going on at the time of the Nicene Creed is this book, The Path of Christianity, The First Thousand Years. And there is, a, I think there's a whole chapter on the Nicene Creed. I can find it here. Uh, but anyway, this is a really good book to have. This is the Path of Christianity, the First Thousand Years by John Anthony McCluckin. So if you have, these are kind of books that I would read in a, any given day. I mean, I have them here in the house and I might call this my Friday Reads. <laughs> so my Friday Reads is Legacy, Nicaea and its Legacy Approach to Fourth Century, Fourth Century Trinitarian Theology by Louis Aldries. And mainly Jeremiah and Lamentations. When I get these volumes in the Reformation Commentary series, I like reading the introduction to Jeremiah and Lamentations. And then I look at some of my favorite passages in Jeremiah. Well, right now I can't start reading this because you know I'm reading the the uh, the one on medieval commentaries on the Gospel of John. 
But I have all this stuff that I can look at throughout the day as I'm studying and reading the Bible. And I'm really thankful for all that. So yeah, I just thought I'd show you these books since I'm down here in the lower level. I don't know what I'm going to read now. Well, I know what I was going to do. I was going to look at this book. Reading Scripture with the Reformers by Timothy George. Uh, just want to look at this. So anyway, I just thought I'd show you these books. Because they're, they're down here. And got to show them to somebody. So this is Friday Reads. This is Friday Night. Hope you're having a good weekend. Hope you had a good week. And I'll list these books uh, if I can remember to do that for those who want to add these books to their library. So I hope you uh, will have a good weekend. And uh, I don't know when I'll make another video. It's going to be a busy week, weekend. And I hope you have a good reading time. Till next time, bye.